Hey everyone, if you have been looking for a help desk app for your organization where users can come and enter tickets and someone like IT helps them out and move the ticket through its life cycle, we're gonna show you how to do that in Power Apps today. Uh, if you're not familiar with Power Apps, it's a tool within Office 365 that you might already have access to. It's actually part two for a video that we did a few years back where we walked through the Help Desk app as a whole and stepped through the entire process for managing tickets. And if you haven't seen that, be sure to go back and check that out if you're wondering kind of what you're getting out of setting up this app. And then come back here and we'll walk through the actual step-by-step -step for how to set it up. There's a few steps to getting this to work. The first is setting up a SharePoint list where your tickets will get stored. The next is to import the template that will include a link uh, in the description to download that. And then a couple tweaks in that Power App just to get everything working correctly. And lastly, a tweak to a flow that does some, some emailing around when some tickets get created. So if that sounds good to you, feel free to hit that like button down below and we'll dig into step number one. So now we also have a blog that goes alongside this. So you don't have to pause this video every time I tell you to do a step, you can just pull up that blog and follow along there and, and get all the details that you need. So step one is setting up the SharePoint list that stores all the tickets. Now this SharePoint list should live on a SharePoint site that all of your users have access to both reading and writing to. It's not the, the best data storage, just in case you're wondering how this could be improved even further, is using like service accounts and getting kind of more complex. But for today, uh, it's a place that anyone can read and write to. You can flip on a toggle to say, the people can only edit the items that they create in the list, which we would recommend. But we'll save that for another time. Right now we're going to go in and create a list and it's going to be a blank list and we need to name it help desk. This is important for later. Uh, we don't need to show this in site navigation. And we're gonna click create. So as we start with a title, we're gonna need a couple extra columns here. So the first column is description. I'm gonna click add column, multiple lines of text and label it description. Hit save. Next is a choice column. We want people to be able to select a category here. So category, get rid of the existing choices and we're going to paste in laptop slash PC equipment issue and laptop slash PC software issue. These can be whatever you want. This is just uh, the what comes out of the box with this template. So. Uh, and then that is all we need for that one. Next is percent complete. So this is gonna be a number. Hit save. Next is a priority choice. And that's just gonna be low, medium, and high, we'll get rid of the extra one. And then for default value, we're just gonna pick low. Next, we're gonna add a choice for task status. And these are gonna be not started, in progress, Completed, deferred, or waiting on CSR. You'll notice that I added all caps here. This is important for later in the flow in order to get it to work correctly. So you want to do that. And the default value is going to be not started. So save that guy. And the last one is assigned to. This is going to be a people choice. Let's see, person assigned to, person or group, great, save. Okay, 
last thing we want to do is make the title not required. So I'm going to go to the list settings, go to title, and then it asks require that this column contains information. I'm going to hit no and click OK there. All right, list is set up. That's where we're going to store our tickets and we can move on to the app setup. Okay, now if you're familiar with creating apps from templates before, you'll know that when you go to the Create tab, uh, there's a bunch of different templates down here. Unfortunately, this Help Desk app template doesn't have any kind of connection to any sort of data, and you'd have to set it up all manually. So uh, we'll save that full explanation for uh, a future video, but for now, we're going to use an existing template that we uh, have adjusted and we'll just import that and we can configure it and uh, make it a little bit easier to set up. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to apps and then you click import canvas app and then you are gonna upload the file. So I just went into my downloads folder and grabbed help desk updated. You'll find a link to that resource in the description down below. And you'll see that it does a few checks when you're importing. The things we want to look out for are these red alerts here. So it's saying uh, there's a couple connections that need to be set up during the import process. I am going to select during import right here and grab this connection that I have set up. If you don't see uh, one in the list right here, you can click create new and it'll create a new connection to SharePoint. Hit save and then same with the Outlook connection. Hit save and import. This will take a couple minutes to import so we'll, through the power of video, jump ahead. All right, it looks like all packaged resources were successfully imported. That is great. We like to see all those green check marks. Now we can go and open the app and take a look around. Okay, upon the first load, it's gonna ask you to configure a few things. There are some connections that need to be allowed. So you can just scan through this quick and, and see, okay, these are all the permissions that this Power App is asking me of, and I'm going to allow those. So here we are on the home screen of the app. I'm gonna skip all the, the kind of tour around the app because we did that in our last video, but I am gonna show you what things you need to change in order to get this to work. So the first thing to note is that this template was created when the whole app on start was uh, not going out of support. And so a lot of the setup of the app happens in what uh, was app on start. And so we need to move that code out of there and into a different place. So. Uh, if you click on app and then scroll down to on start, you'll see that there's some code going on here that we don't want to happen here. We want to move that to the login screens on visible uh, method here. So I'm just gonna paste in a snippet that you can find in the blog associated uh, in the description down below, but I'm gonna paste that in. And then the last thing we wanna do in this snippet is adjust the admin list to be my user. So I'm gonna put in my email here and then that is all we need for that. I'm gonna do a quick save. Okay, next we want to wire up the list that we created. There is an existing list that it's trying to wire up to, but it's gonna fail because it's using an old ID and we just need to like jiggle the handle a little, a little bit and get that wired up. So if you go to view and then data sources, note that Power Apps is actually, they're in the middle of adjusting some of this, this banner up here and some of the, uh, the menu. So it might look different for you, but I think when you import this old template, it'll be consistent and always show the way that is in this video. But just in case you see something different, that's why. Uh, so here's the, the list that we want to actually remove, and then we're going to add a new data source. So if you search for SharePoint, select that, and then we need to find the list that we 
set up earlier. So I grabbed that from the site where I had it stored, checked help desk, and then that got it wired up. All right, I'm gonna give it one more save. And then we can actually give this a shot really quick. So let's say I'm gonna be a user, I'm gonna create a new ticket. Just gonna fill in dummy data here. Click create, it says it's been submitted. Let's go take a look. Hey, and look at, there it is, test ticket showed up just fine. So now if we go back here, log in as help desk admin, you can see that this ticket exists. You can click edit, and then the, the job is to kind of assign it to someone, move it across this life cycle, all the things that we showed in our previous video. The last thing to do with this Power App is if you go to File, Publish, that is what's gonna make it available to your users. So it will not show up unless you hit that Publish button. Anytime that you make updates to this app, you're gonna wanna save and then publish it for people to see. All right, the last step into setting up this template is to modify the flow that got created during the import process. There's a, a few things that we need to tweak in order to get it all happy. So I'm going to go into the flow. If you, if you go to uh, your Power Apps dashboard and then go to My Flows, you'll see it there. You'll notice some duplication here just because I've been testing this and, and working through it a few times. But um, we'll open the most recent one and then click Edit. So the first thing we wanna do is open up this get items. And this is not our SharePoint site here. We wanna switch this out so that it gets items from the list that we, uh, we created earlier. So I'm gonna select that site and the help desk and that's it for the get items. We can collapse that back down. We're gonna open the apply to each and then the switch and this gets pretty wide so uh, just just be careful. We want to look at the case not started uh, switch statement here. And what this is is an email that goes out when uh, a case gets created and you want to notify that someone that there's a ticket for them. So you'll notice here that it's sending an email to admin at Microsoft.com. Well, we don't want that. We want to send it to whoever your admin is. In my case, we're gonna do me. And then we're gonna save this. It's good to always check your flow checker. We have zero errors and warnings here. And that is it. Let's give that a quick test. I'm gonna go back to the Power App and then Create a new email or a new uh, ticket here. Ticket two. This time it's a software issue. It is high priority. Help, please. Create. It's submitted. Now we should be able to go back to our flows. And I'm going to give this a little refresh. It doesn't look like it's run yet, but we'll give it a minute. You know what, I just ran into a situation. This is not running because I forgot to turn it on. So it happens to the best of us. I'm gonna go up here in the bar and click turn on. So now we're good to go. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so we're gonna create this ticket one more time. Ticket number three. Click create. Looks like it was created. Let's see how our flow is doing. Oh, I just heard a notification from my email. Hey, there's a ticket for you, ticket number three. And there we go. It's a link to the line item in the list. So I can go here and, and check out what's going on. So that is all that there is to setting up this help desk template. Uh, hopefully it's useful to you, kind of spelling out the, the instructions on how to get this done and you know, you're, you're able to use it at your organization. Again, we have a blog that, that lists out all the details for setting this up so that you can follow along there. 
that link will be in the description but otherwise that's all we have for today so really appreciate you watching feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or, or thoughts on this um, but yeah thanks for being here and we'll see you again next time